Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Duke Oishi. And I'm Maria Kishan. In our show this week, we'll cover HVCA's 2013 Entrepreneur and Deal of the Year Awards Luncheon at the Plaza Club. Beside the awards, we heard a very provocative speech on the subject of entrepreneurship by Dan Friedman, a very successful serial entrepreneur. Everyone learned something from that speech, so here's what he said. Actually, you may want to make notes of the advice he gives. I'd like to talk a little bit about the things that I wish I'd known back when I was getting started as an entrepreneur. So I started to make a list, and uh, that list, unfortunately, was so long that I think lunch would stretch into dinner. <laughs> so you'll be, you know, those of you with afternoon appointments will be pleased to know that I've narrowed it down to about five rules of thumb. Rule of thumb number one is uh, if you're an entrepreneur, please start the right business, not the wrong one. But of course, the question is, how do you know which one is which? And uh, it's difficult. There's some people who decide they want to be entrepreneurs, and it's the hardest thing for them to figure out, you know, what to do. What business should I start? You know, should it be a restaurant? Should it be a shoe store? Should it be a software company? And if so, you know, in what area? And then there's uh, the other kind. We've all met the other kind, and that's someone who knows exactly what kind of business to start, uh, regardless of the fact that nobody else seems to think it's a particularly good idea. So for both kinds of people, whether you're, and you know, I certainly have fallen into both of those categories, whether you're the first one or the second one, my advice to you is, you know, you've got to air these ideas out well before you start putting the business together. And when everybody tells you they have the same problems or they want the same things, then you've got a business. I mean, of course, you have to be able to provide whatever it is that they want. So, you know, um, it, it has to be tempered by that. But that's rule of thumb number one is, uh, you know, air your ideas out, let the customers or potential customers invent the new business for you. Rule of thumb number two, uh, based on, on my experience, is please have a business model where everything has to go wrong before your business fails. Whereas what we see all too often is a business model where everything has to go right before your business succeeds. I want to be involved in a business that's bulletproof, where the business model is robust, where dozens of things can go wrong and we still get all the way through to there being a positive outcome for the business. Unfortunately, we see the, the, the other one far too often. Rule of thumb number three is don't un underestimate just how hard it is to tell the world about your wonderful product or service. And what I mean by that is so many times we have these great entrepreneurs. Uh, let's say it's in software, which is my field. So they're a great programmer, and they've noticed what customers need. But then they build the product because they're very talented, and they forget to tell anybody about it. And so they put themselves in a position where people buy the competitor's product without first having rejected their product. And that's a sign you have not done your marketing right. If business is like a game of cards, then having a great product is like putting the ante on the table and sitting down to play a hand. If you don't have the ante, you can't play cards. If you don't have the product, you can't play business. But putting down the ante is not the game. The game is in the sales and marketing. So. Uh, I find often, and I was, again, a great example of this, um, entrepreneurs really just underestimate the amount of effort and the differing kinds of skills that are required in order to, uh, to get their product out there in front of the world. Rule number four, be hot. And if you're not hot, pivot, change it. Now, we didn't used to call it pivoting. We used to call it resetting or various other words. Today's word is pivot. But uh, what a shame to put in all the work to make your product and to do your marketing correctly and to do everything right and to be totally eclipsed by a bunch of posers with a half a product, half baked, 
but that's hot. And with the same amount of effort and the same amount of inputs as you, gets 10 times the outputs, whether it's recognition, whether it's an you know, acquisition price, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you're going to put in all the work to be an entrepreneur, and I don't know of any entrepreneurs that don't work hard, if you're going to put in all that work, you might as well be hot. It is your job as an entrepreneur to put your company in the hottest place possible and keep it there, because hot is fickle. It moves. It changes. And because when you're making a product, especially in software, it takes a few months, maybe a year, to get a, a product ready, you need to figure out what's going to be hot next year, not just what's hot this year. And if you're wrong, you need to fix it. So rule number four, be hot. A rule number five is slightly different, is the last rule. Uh, it's the rule you need to follow if you want any deal to ever get made. If you're closing a financing or you're trying to recruit somebody to be a new senior management executive of, at your company or a board member uh, or a senior customer that is uh, going to you know, make the deal with you that's going to put your company on the map. Some of you have heard me say this before. The closer they look, the better it needs to seem. And what I mean by that is you need a pitch in order to get in the door. And if your pitch isn't good, you won't get in the door. So yes, you need a great pitch. But whatever bluff you've used in the pitch, you need to carry it all the way through until the deal is closed. And in fact, if you, if you want to have a reputation in the industry that spans more than one company, as, as I would hope that you do want that, after you finish with that bluff, then you need to deliver. And that's the trick, is picking the bluff. We all do it. OK? But we need to deliver as well. Maybe you say, well, my business model doesn't make sense if I'm conservative. Well, then, you know, let's go back to rule one, OK? Let's start the right business. Start the business that is tolerant of your, well, that, that, that start the business that um, was invented by a lot of customers or potential customers, so you know that it's going to be something that they need and that is tolerant of failures and uh, that is reasonably hot and the closer that people look at it, the better it gets. After Dan Friedman's remarks, Bill Spencer presented five Entrepreneur of the Year awards. Our first award goes to the Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about when he gets up here to accept his award. This gentleman is the co-founder and CEO of Volta Industries, LLC. Um, he's a He's been an auto enthusiast since he was born, and now with the, the surge in the electronic vehicles, he and his partners came up with the idea of making charging stations free and getting that charge paid for by advertising. So please welcome and acknowledge and congratulate Scott Mercer, CEO of Volta Industries. Yeah, I, get, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, this is this was really kind of the prototypical started in your garage right after college with no idea of what you were doing kind of project. Um, so I guess anything that we've learned in doing it, we've learned basically from all of you guys. Clearly one of the things that's hot in Hawaii is software. And um, I'm, I'm excited to be able to bring up a gentleman who was actually uh, a young entrepreneur of the year award winner several years ago. Now he's got well maybe a couple of gray hairs. Uh, he's got a little boy. He's you know he's his business, which is a fantastic business that uh, has really accumulated a long list of very top notch clients like Pimco and Sony and Bank of America and Nomura in Japan. He's back and forth between here and Japan. Uh, he's the CEO and owner of Ikaizo, uh, but we're honoring him today not only for uh, his work in software with Ikaizo, but as we like to see with especially software startups, is the opportunity to spin out um, new software businesses, uh, which come from doing just what Dan said, solving customer problems. And he's got some great customers uh, whose problems he's solving. So please uh, honor and congratulate Dan Luck, Contix. Dan, come on up. We're very excited about the company. We've put together a great team. 
uh, here in Hawaii, and we look forward to we, we Dan. We feel that we we definitely feel confident. We've we've uh, achieved step one in your manifesto, and we will be diligent in making sure we follow steps uh, two through five. So thank you very much. One of my next favorite categories is um, the inventor entrepreneur. You know, we do see a lot of inventors here in Hawaii. There's a lot of interesting IP coming out of the university, but there's a lot of interesting IP coming out of people's garages and apartments. Um, I, I like inventors because um, they're really one of the, you know, the toughest entrepreneurs to work with. Uh, and not all of them have a, a business sense. Um, they, you know, they have a great idea. They have a, a great um, ability to uh, convince themselves that there's a market for some of their inventions. Uh, but it really takes somebody that can balance the inventiveness with the, the business sense. And this is who uh, I think this year's awardee represents. Um, he's the founder of a company called Labels That Talk, founded in 2006, and he, he's invented and has several patents for a product called Sound Paper, which basically lets you take sound and put it on anything from a, a label to a, a bottle to a greeting card to just about whatever paper product you could think of. Uh, he also invented a, uh, and was co-founder of a company called Singing Fish, which was the world's first audio video search engine sold to AOL. So please welcome and congratulate Mr. Ken Birkin. Thank you. And Dan, I'd especially like to thank you for only having five rules, because I've broken all of those. And if you'd had 10 rules, I would have broken all of them as well. And I want to thank many of the people in the, this room who have helped me over the years that I've been working on, on this. And I especially get to thank my wife, who's actually here today. So thank you. Our next entrepreneur is uh, in the category of socially responsible entrepreneurship. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, this is one of the biggest and fastest growing areas of uh, finance. That is to say, financing uh, socially responsible ventures. And we have a, a number of social entrepreneurs here in Hawaii. And today, we're going to honor a, a young woman who unfortunately cannot be with us um, because she's in San Francisco pitching her business to uh, a demo day, right? Pretty soon. Two weeks, and uh, she's part of an accelerator process in Silicon Valley that, that Blue Startups is modeled after, and she's been part of that. Um, she's a former Peace Corps volunteer, worked as a global tea ambassador in Kyoto, Japan with the International Tea Farms Alliance. Um, she made a lot of connections, and now uh, she saw the benefit of commercializing and helping these small farmers get their products to market. And so I'm going to play a little uh, video of Elise Peterson. Thank you to the Hawaii Venture Capital Association for this amazing honor. I'm so sorry that I can't be there today, but I'm happy that my mom is there to accept the award. Please welcome her mom, Mary Peterson. I know Elise just wants to thank everybody for this. Another category that, um, that I enjoy and really uh, represents uh, entrepreneurship, the sort of long-standing entrepreneurship, if you will. Uh, these uh, award has gone out to folks who've really spent the better part of their uh, careers and life focused in, in a particular area and, and working very hard. You know, entrepreneurship is not an overnight success kind of thing. Uh, some people do have that uh, happen to them, but for the most part, it just takes a, a lot of work, a lot of hard work, and a lot of persistence. And uh, so I'm really happy to acknowledge a gentleman who has spent more than 20 years in the biotech industry in Hawaii as a biotech uh, analyst and investment banker, but also as a biotech entrepreneur. Uh, he's founded a great company, which I can't wait for the product to go to market because I'm allergic to NSAIDs. <laughs> a little uh, the truth there. So uh, his, pro his company is called Cardax, uh, Cardax Pharmaceuticals. And he's been at it for a while. And before that, he was the CEO of Hawaii Biotech, out of which Cardax was spun. So please honor and welcome uh, our Legacy Entrepreneur of the Year, Dave Wadamal. Dave? Thank you, Bill. It's great to, great to be here. Delighted to be here. But you kind of get these awards, you kind of know you're getting on, you know, and the, and the thing. So, yeah, the Legacy Award, right? You know, it's, it's like, okay, not the new company, not the new guy. I'd like to introduce our Deal of the Year winner. Um, I would like to say that we had, had multiple Deal of the Year winners, but um, 
nothing that compares to this deal of the year winner and hence uh, only one this year. Uh, it's still a tough time to raise capital. Uh, you know, we're doing our best to bring more capital to Hawaii and uh, prepare entrepreneurs to receive capital, but it's still tough out there. And you have to look all over the world. You can't just look in our own backyard because there's n not often anything in the backyard. But that's changing. So uh, I want to be positive and, and let you know that it can be done, but it takes, it takes diligence. It takes a lot of time in the air. And of course, it helps to have a great product. And our deal of the year winner this year has pioneered the concept of uh, micro CSP, which is using mirrors to concentrate solar power and generate steam to create a high quality thermal heat, uh, which has uh, been demonstrated and tested. There's a facility on the Big Island, and I'll let our winner tell you a little bit more. He was successful in raising about an eight figure, mil uh, eight figure round this year, no small uh, feat. Please welcome and let's honor Darren Kimura, CEO of Sopagee. We have had so much support uh, from, from local investors such as Kolahala, but also local groups such as High Beam, who I, I think B-Ling is in here, um, HREDV, I think I saw Don out there earlier, um, Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation. Without, without you guys being out there and part of this, this ecosystem, you know, we wouldn't exist. So on behalf of Sopagee again, thank you very much. Then Bill Spencer presented the Deal of the Year Award to Darren Kimura of Sopaji. As you could see, the award winners were all delighted to receive their awards, and the attendees were delighted to share the moment. These HBCA award luncheons are a great coming together for entrepreneurs, deal makers, and the tech community in general. The ripple effect is clear. Awards and award ceremonies give great encouragement to Hawaii entrepreneurs and tech companies. Not only are they rewarded for their success, they are also elevated as role models for others who may follow them for similar awards in the future. It's a win-win for everyone, and we've got to keep on doing it. Congratulations to the winners, and congratulations to HBCA and its president, Bill Spencer, for organizing and continuing this program after all these years. What are you going to say to your daughter when you talk to her? Um, that she should have taken off the makeup. <laughs> so how does it feel? It's great, yeah. yeah. Always exciting to win these things. Yeah. So, yeah. So what's the next step for you? Well, you know, we closed our big round last year. Now we have to execute. And that's always the, the fun part, but the challenging part. We've got to sell more solar collectors. We've got to globalize. We've got to keep our price points going, <laughs> you know, in the right direction. So how does it feel to be the wife of a winner, Ken Burton? <laughs> oh, it's great. One of the great things about being here is how good and supportive the community is. And I love being here and I love being a part of it. We do have the, the benefit of great relationships. Everybody knows everybody. And I think that's one of the great components of helping entrepreneurs succeed is this community that we've created. It's uh, you know, exciting to get some acknowledgement and we've got a We've got a great team, great technology, and just putting the funding together is our, our current task and uh, getting on to trading for us. It's a legacy now, a legacy award, but, but it's, great. it's great that it's part of the entrepreneurial spirit in Hawaii, so very happy to do that. But we made a lot of progress recently, so I, I think there's a real opportunity going ahead. I love this event. It's my favorite event. I love honoring our entrepreneurs. I really think they're heroes. And we've got some great ones here in Hawaii. They prove that you can start fantastic, world-class businesses. I thought today was a great day. I thought the speech by, by uh, Friedman was wonderful. Um, I wrote down all of his five, uh, five mistakes. I was looking for the six through ten. But you know, um, gosh, the awards and everything else, I think it gives energy to, to folks. And I think energy is part of the equation. I think that's a great thing. But it was nice to hear the kind of speech that uh, was from experience and wasn't full of uh, a lot of BS. You know, it was it was good. It's great to see that entrepreneurship's alive and well in in Hawaii. Um, you know, the last couple of years have been very challenging from a funding point of view, and uh, you know, these are the guys that have persisted and fought on through. And I, I I think we've got you know some really good looking companies over the next couple of years. So. What's happening here is a very it's very exciting. This is a wonderful array of extremely interesting companies and very good entrepreneurs. Oh, it's a good crowd, and uh, I was very impressed with the crop of entrepreneurs of the year and, and the, you know, the deal of the year as well. So, uh, thank you very much for asking me to speak. It was uh, a great honor. I thought it was really great. There are a lot of great entrepreneurs and a lot to learn from them. So, I was so happy to be here today.
And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech's 4 to 5 p.m. drive time radio series on KGU 760 AM continues this week. Tune in to 760 AM for Tech on Wednesday, Asia in Review on Thursday, and Think Tech Fridays on Friday. Raise your awareness on Think Tech Radio. On February 28th, HVC and Think Tech will present a luncheon program at the Plaza Club entitled Transportation in Hawaii. How well are we getting around these days? Featuring speakers on various modes of air, sea, and land transportation and the issues now in play. Sign up for these programs on hvca.org. And now, here's Bill Spencer, President of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, with this week's Spensation. Bill, that was very good uh, last week at the Plaza Club, uh, honoring the entrepreneurs and the, the, the deals. Um, it's very important that HVCA do that. I agree. I agree. I had a lot of fun. Uh, there were a great bunch of people that we honored. Some of our graduates from previous years were there in the audience, and it really makes for a, a good event. I'm, I'm glad we do it. Uh, looks like it's been going on 10 years now for Deal of the Year and five years for Entrepreneur of the Year. Great. So, good. Um, great thing to be able to do that. And uh, it also gives us a chance to uh, encourage young entrepreneurs because every year when we do this, um, HVCA gives a grant uh, to the Career Technical Education Program which is matched by our Deal of the Year winner. So uh, what that money does is it goes to prizes for the winners of the high school business plan competition, which is one of the, the tracks of career technical education. This is a great program. It's a, it's a federal program that is designed to give the kids real world experience. Uh, not metal shop, not wood shop. These are high school kids. These are high school kids. Uh, high school kids all across the state participate. And uh, the, uh, during the course of their uh, senior year, they build teams. They, uh, the business plan competition lets them uh, do a fantasy business, if you will, some of whom uh, actually think of taking it on to, to really do it and execute their business plan. Then there are, are marketing plans that get developed. That's another track. Um, there's health-related activities. There's 3D modeling. Uh, it's a great program, and it's got a lot of community support. McDonald's is one of the big sponsors of this. Um, one of the uh, uh, credit unions is involved, and it's something that you know our listeners uh, can support as well. How do they do that? How do they connect up? Well, um, you can find out more about the program at uh, their website, hawaii.edu slash CTE for career technical education. Uh, but they, they have a nonprofit affiliation with ThinkTech that allows um, people to make contributions. They mm -hmm. can go to prize money That's or right. scholarship. And uh, basically, it's a great way to augment this otherwise uh, government-funded program. I really like the uh, business plan pitching competition in Waikiki every year. You and I have both sat as judges in that. And it's such a kick to see these high school kids, um, you know, get up like business people and pitch their plans. Some of their plans are really fun, maybe a little off the wall, but others are serious. In any event, what it does is it gives them a grounding in this sort of thing, and it, it gives them a way to sort of ideate into business. Uh, which is something they wouldn't have otherwise. That's right. And these are not just fly-by-night uh, programs. The curriculums uh, have to meet very high standards. They're well thought out. There's a test involved uh, with each of them. And, uh, you know, whoever wins the, uh, or gets the highest score on the test gets acknowledged. The teachers are also uh, very motivated. And uh, the, you'd be amazed at... at uh, how competitive they are and making sure that their kids do a good job. That's the ingredient, you know, when you make it competitive, it's almost, may I say, like a sport, and it gets their juices going, and then you, you know, the important thing about this bill is that it gives them contact with the business community, guys like you, and this is invaluable because otherwise they wouldn't have it. They live in a little balloon, a little, little bubble in high school, never really get out and see what the real world, the business world is like. I'm so happy the program exists. Me too. And you can get involved too. So check out hawaii.edu slash CTE, Career Technical Education, and see what we can do to help our kids. Thanks, Bill. All right. Thank Good you. Good for you.
<laughs> we'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Miko on Maui and Helco on the Big Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company, and CEO of CBI Polymers, a tech company in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle & Cook Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Okay, Maria, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week can't get enough of it, just like Maria does. For additional times, check out OC16.TV. You bet, Duke. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech on OC16, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com, be a sponsor or a volunteer, and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Duke Oishi. Thanks so much for joining us on Think Tech. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. My name is DJ. Think Tech is splendid.